outside of our food and water supply being poisoned, there are many ways to the powers at be destroy our health, damage our brain function, eliminating our ability to think, and therefore achieve what we want in life. Yeah, most people know McDonald's is bad for you and feel like crap after eating fast food or junk food, but don't realize how significant that is for their overall well-being and what they want with their lives. Since the focus of my channel has been diet for the majority of it, and I know a lot of you guys are very strict already, today we're going to go over some things you might have overlooked. And personally, you know, I was addicted to video games for most of my life until my early 20s, and the switch you know, turned on when I fixed my diet. I wasn't really addicted anymore and things improved. And the worst part of it is these public officials and doctors that people trust are evil. They're misleading them. The importance of diet is understated and the information that they do give us, even though there is some truth, is tainted with lies to ruin our health even further. Uh, I've touched on the vegan diet so many times. You guys know how bad it is for you. Even just vegetarian, making jokes about brain fog and the elite's bluntness in us wanting to eat bugs and not meat you know, shows that it can't be good for us. Most people are aware of EMF radiation, but don't realize how impactful it can be, the sole factor in destroying your health. Uh, candida, fungal overgrowth, gut dysbiosis, microbiome imbalances will affect how you feel and ultimately think. And last but not least is weed, marijuana. We did a video on it a few years ago, but with the increasing popularity because of legalization, it's worth touching on briefly again. First, we'll touch on the vegan stuff, particularly the reduction of animal foods because you need at least 35 to 50 percent of your diet to be animal based if you want the optimal amount of nutrition. Nutritional assessment in vegetarians and vegans questions clinicians should ask. The clinical consequences of an insufficiently mindful vegetarian or vegan diet include many common symptoms such as anxiety, brain fog, depression, fatigue, insomnia, neuropathies, and other neurological dysfunction. Once the amount of meat in the diet is reduced to a certain point or eliminated altogether, the amount of potential health issues is exacerbated because there are so many nutritional deficiencies. Isolating them is an impossible task, but choline is one of them, an essential nutrient for public health. Given the importance of choline in a wide range of critical functions in the human body, coupled with less than optimal intakes among the population, dietary guidance should be developed to encourage the intake of choline-rich foods. So for each of those nutrients vegans claim they don't need from meat, whether it's all the B vitamins, a certain amino acid, cholesterol, you'll find studies explaining how deficiencies in those symptoms of specific nutrients are identical with symptoms typically experienced by vegans. Doctors are really good at getting people to detach diet from disease. So whenever you have any health issues or problems, even if you're vegan, they're just going to say, oh, no, it's, a, it's not the diet, it's a genetic problem. So it's kind of tough to figure things out on your own when you have those trusted people telling you what to do. So next up is the EMF radiation, electric and magnetic fields, and put simply, all of these modern electronic devices, Wi-Fi, routers, cell phones, Amazon Alexa, Netflix Fire Stick, so much bad stuff now. Possible effects of radio frequency electromagnetic field exposure on central nervous system. Neurological cognitive disorders such as headache, tremor, dizziness, loss of memory, loss of concentration, and sleep disturbance due to RF, EMF, radio frequency, electric and magnetic fields, have also been reported by several epidemiological studies. So radio frequency radiation is specifically the cell phones, the Wi-Fi, the routers, the magnetic and electric fields are more subjective and dependent on your living situation. The radial maze and Morse water maze test showed that learning and memory functions were reduced in rats exposed to EMF. And there are just too many studies clearly demonstrating how dangerous radiation from modern technology is. I could sit here for days, days and days and days and go over each of them. And it's by far the biggest health secret in general. This is just so easy to experience yourself. You know, sleep one night in a high EMF environment, an apartment with your phone on next to your head, then go camping or go to a house, turn all the electronics off, 
And you go from being an anxious mess to having the best night's sleep in your life and feeling good when you wake up. And I'm sure some of you have noticed by now, all of these topics are kind of shunned by the mainstream. Like if you try to go against a vegan diet, people call you wrong. If you try to explain the dangers of EMF, people call you wrong, you know, say you're crazy. Candida is interesting because modern doctors still don't believe it's a real thing. I've done several on Candida, but if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a strain of yeast that naturally occurs in our gut microbiome, which can overgrow in toxic circumstances like liver toxicity or very poor diet. So it's important to understand that candida is our body trying to protect us from something, but the symptoms from it are also very, you know, distressful and painful and not pleasant. Microglia and amyloid precursor coordinate control of transient candida cerebritis with memory deficiency. We show that intravenous injections of 25,000 candida albican cells cause a highly localized cerebritis marked by the accumulation of activated microglial and astroglial cells around yeast aggregates forming fungal induced glial granulomas. So they injected candida into the bloodstream of a rat which migrated to the brain caused massive inflammation. That's the simple terminology because these clowns like to sound so smart with these, these words. So when the candida in the stomach overgrows the fungus branch out into the hyphae stage. It's like uh, it's like a tree with its branches going all throughout your stomach. It doesn't, it's, it's not pleasant. That results in fungal infections in all of your organs and bloodstream. When I had bad liver damage, my candida was so severe, I couldn't sleep. I was losing my train of thought frequently. I had no focus whatsoever. I was getting very specific isolated back pain. So those fungal cells can really go anywhere in your body if, um, if there's an overgrowth because they're in the bloodstream circulating everywhere. As I mentioned earlier, I do have a full video on marijuana going much further in depth, analyzing more studies, and it can be a touchy subject for some people because they use it to treat their illness, and frankly, they're addicted to it. The effect of cannabis use on memory, function, and update. Cognitive neurobiological studies suggest that cannabinoids may affect functioning in memory, relevant brain areas by interfering with the homeostatic role of the ECB system. So uh, just like the EMF stuff, there's so many studies on marijuana, weed, whatever you want to call it, showing how bad it is for your brain and for your mind. It's just swept under the rug the same way the radiation is. And my layman's understanding of dope is that it fries your brain so much the anxiety or whatever issues you're experiencing mentally will be suppressed. You know, it's not a solution. Turning your brain off is not a solution to fixing the problem. And I've never really smoked myself, but what got me to really dislike weed was the behavior of some girls I, I met, and it was so consistent across the board. They were very slow and irregular with responding to messages, never straightforward with anything in any conversation, had no motivation to do anything. Like they never had a job or a career or you know doing anything productive. And would wander around aimlessly if we hung out or went to a restaurant. It's like they keep interrupting themselves when they were they can focus on one task. So, you know, depending on how much dope people smoke and if it's an everyday thing and they're using tons and tons of it, that it's not good. So these four things combined with the crap in the food and water is what creates a zombie. Brain melting away on a vegan diet, fried by EMF in the smart city apartment with the candida demon growing in your stomach, only to smoke dope at night and kill the one brain cell you had left. And a very significant thing I didn't mention today is just uh, prescription drugs, which under really any circumstance you should try to get off of them as soon as possible because uh, that can be a category on its own, but since there are so many of them and it's a very touchy subject and subjective, maybe a separate video. You guys know how to incorporate more animal foods. Uh, I've really been liking a collagen bone broth for amino acids lately. Uh, we have a lot of shielding products on wifishielding.com. Probiotics and reducing that radiation will keep candida at bay. I use water key for that. We have available on frankiesfreerangefoods.com. And you shouldn't smoke dope unless some girl with uh, boobies bigger than your head hands you a blunt. So maybe I should leave my house more often. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, I did take down the video yesterday because um, uh, despite how I'm not having 
a good time in my personal life. I still have respect. Uh, so maybe we'll talk about that um, in another video, but I'm still trying to pack all my stuff up and, and move out as soon as possible. So if you guys do want to help me and support me, you can go to frank com and see all of my businesses. I'm not going to uh, start a pity uh, party and like ask people for money and donations. Maybe if I'm actually living on the street, we'll do that. <laughs>